for our last section in chapter 3. 3, 4, we're going to focus on linear and angular speed applications. Um, we're going to throw in a little bit of that dimensional analysis in this section as well. Now, linear and angular speed, it kind of is a little bit misleading when we talk about linear speed because linear speed does not mean something is traveling in a straight line. Suppose that point P, so here's my point P on my circle. Point P is moving at a constant speed along a circle of radius R, my circle radius R. Point P is rotating around the center, Z, center O. So point P is moving forward, but it's not in a straight line. This is my linear speed because that point is traveling. The measure of how fast the position of P is changing is my linear speed. If V represents linear speed, and, and V we usually think of kind of as velocity, which is, is speed with direction, um, but we are going to use V to represent our linear speed here, then speed is equal to distance divided by time. So the distance is that arc length S that it travels over a certain unit of time. So whether we're in seconds, minutes, um, you know, whatever our value for T is. So S is the arc length traced by point P at time T. Now this idea of speed equaling distance divided by time, this is, this is very common. Uh, you know, if we know if we are driving 60 miles an hour for two hours, we get to travel 120 miles, right? 60 miles for two, uh, per hour, hmm, 60 miles per hour times two hours. Those hours units cancel out, dimensional analysis. 60 times two gives me 120 miles traveled. Distance equals rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. We use that all the time. If I'm going to walk at a, at a speed of, of three miles an hour for, for half an hour, I've walked a mile and a half. Distance equals rate times time. Well, conversely, I can turn this around to solve for rate by dividing both sides by t. So rate is my distance divided by time. I, I talk about speed as a rate, 60 miles per hour, 60 miles per one hour, that's an HR for hour, sorry. Rate, distance, rate is distance divided by time, miles per hour, feet per second, um, whatever the units might be. Rate is distance divided by time. I can also solve for time by dividing both sides of this initial equation by r, so time is distance divided by rate. Um, all three of these equations are true. The second two are built from the first. So where speed is my rate, speed is distance divided by time, this is the same equation, the same calculation as what we're using for our linear speed. All right, let's talk about angular speed. As P travels along the circle, this ray, OP, is rotating around the origin. This ray, OP, is the terminal side of my angle theta, and that angle is changing as this ray rotates. So as my ray, OP, is rotating around, theta is increasing. The measure of how fast that angle, POB, or this angle theta, the measure of how fast it is changing is what we call our angular speed. Angular speed is symbolized by omega. That's my symbol omega. Omega equals theta divided by t, my angle divided by time, where my angle theta is in radians. Again, that measure of radians is important. With earlier formulas in this chapter, theta must be measured in radians with omega expressed as radians per unit of time. So we have two different measures of speed. We have the measure at how fast this angle is increasing and we have the measure of how fast our point P on our circle is traveling. 
Um, angular speed. Let's do it first. Angular speed, omega. Omega is our angle theta in radians divided by t. Again, omega is radians per unit of time. I can rearrange these, um, these terms. I could solve for theta by multiplying omega times t. I could solve for t by taking this equation and dividing theta by omega. So there are two different alternatives that both come from this original equation. On linear speed, my value v, we said that v is equal to s over t. And we know from previous sections that that value s, that arc length, is r theta. s is equal to r theta. So I can take out this value s and substitute in r theta. And we were just given the fact that omega is equal to theta over t. So v is also equal to r omega. Since omega equals theta over t, v is also equal to r omega. So there's three different versions of our linear speed formula. And we've got our angular speed calculation solved for either theta or t so that we can take what we're given and we can work with it. Now that statement is really important as we're moving into these application problems. Analyze what you know and what you need to know to pick the appropriate formula. Which one's better? Well, it doesn't matter. Which one's better is the one that gets us to the correct answer the quickest, right? Work smarter, not harder. Um, so we're going to keep these formulas at hand, and we're going to look at our first example application problem. Suppose that point P is on a circle with radius 15 inches, and ray OP is rotating with an angular speed of pi twelfths radians per second. So let's, let's think about this with a picture. Always have that sketch at hand. We've got um, a circle with a radius of 15 inches. Ray OP is rotating with an angular speed. So this is something I know. Angular speed is omega. My angular speed is omega. Omega is pi twelfths radians per second. pi twelfths radians per second, or pi radians every 12 seconds, right? Or pi twelfths radians per one second. However you want to think about that. That's my value for omega. And my first question is to find the angle generated by P in 10 seconds. Well, my angle is theta. What is this angle going to be? after 10 seconds. So let's go back to our calculations. We know omega, we need theta. We know omega, we need theta. Um, I've got an omega over here, I've got a theta over here, I've got theta and omega here. You know what, we need theta, we have omega, do we also have t? Well, yeah, we said 10 seconds, right? So I can say, all right, theta is omega t, where I was given omega as pi twelfths radians per second, and I want to know a time of 10 seconds. So my seconds are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with radians. 
So that gives me 10 pi twelfths or 5 pi sixths as my value for theta. There's my angle. I've, I've rotated in 10 seconds, if this is my angular speed, I've rotated an angle of 5 pi sixths at the end of that 10 seconds. Well, 5 pi 6 is almost pi. 6 pi 6 would be over here at pi. So 5 pi 6 is going to be over here, right? It's rotated into the second quadrant. Now my next question follows up with that. Find the distance traveled by p along the circle in 10 seconds. Um, distance traveled by p, that looks like linear speed. So I'm solving for v. linear speed, I'm solving for v. Um, I also could think of that as arc length, right? I also can think of it as arc length. So I've got some options here. I know that s is equal to r theta. I also know that um, that v is equal to, well v is equal to a lot of things, but what is v equal to that that I that I want to work with here. V is equal to S over T. V is equal to R omega. I know R and omega. V is equal to R omega. I've got some options. I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to say, okay, S is equal to R theta. Um, my radius is 15 inches. My angle theta, we just see, we just we've just worked out our angle theta in this 10 second interval because we use 10 seconds up here. So we know that in 10 seconds that angle is 5 pi 6. So that arc length is right here. Um, 15 and 6, they're going to simplify by a value of 3, factor of 3, so that leaves me with a 2 and a 5. 5 and 5, is that would be 25 pi and we are in units of inches. My arc length is going to be 25 pi inches. Now notice I have not picked up a calculator yet, right? I have not picked up a calculator yet because I, I'm not approximating anything. I'm not being asked to round anything. Um, so I haven't picked up a calculator. So, all right, let's do... Linear speed of p, oh, so linear speed of p. That was the distance, this is the speed. I misread that. I was, I was looking at that thing and I don't think that's going to quite give me what I want, but I misread that. Everybody makes mistakes, guys. Here we go. This was my first one of the day, first one of the section. Um, this distance traveled is not a speed. Distance is not a speed. Distance is s. I hope that you were sitting at home going, that's not right. She did not apply that correctly. That's not what that means. That's not what that reads. Um, because you were right. If you were doubting me, S is my distance. S is my distance traveled by P. Linear speed <laughs> is V in inches per second. Um, we have options. We just found S. So let's use what we just found. We're going to use S over T as our calculation for linear speed, our very first equation here, S over T. We know lots of stuff, so we could have we could set it up pretty much anywhere here. We know omega, we know R, um, but I'm going to choose to go here to S over T, where S is um, 25 pi and left that out, left that out, 25 pi over 2, 25 pi over 2 inches, which gives me 25 pi over 2 divided by my time. Well, this is the distance traveled in 10 seconds, so I'm going to have to divide that by 10 seconds. This is radians per second. Dividing by, no, that's inches, inches divided by seconds, 10 seconds. 25 pi over 2. Now, when we 
are working with this complex ratio here, this complex rational expression. It's just a big division problem. How do we divide when we have fractions? Well, we multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 1 over 10, which gets me to 25 pi over 20. If I factor out that factor of 5, I have 5 pi fourths, and I've still got inches per second. 5 pi fourths inches per second. That's how fast that point P is moving. Okay, so to go back and recap before we do the next example and hopefully don't make any mistakes on, this, on the next example. We're finding our angle theta that's generated in 10 seconds using theta equals omega t. The distance traveled by P is s. That is what I'm looking for here not a speed. I'm just looking for a distance. S equals R theta. We were given R. We found theta, so we plug it in. Don't forget your denominator. This denominator is 1 times 2. So 25 pi over 2 inches is the distance around your circle. That's how far P traveled along that circle. How fast did P move? Well, P moved. That's my linear speed V s over t, set up according to the distance it traveled in 10 seconds, gives me a, a motion, a speed of 5 pi fourths inches per second for that point p. Alright, we're going to do better on this one. I want you to pause the video, work through this, this problem a, b, c, see what you get. See if yours matches mine. P is traveling along your circle, radius 10, at a speed, omega, angular speed, at pi 18 radians per second. What is the angle that is generated by P in 6 seconds? Well, in 6 seconds, the angle, I'm looking for theta. I know that th theta is omega t. I've been given a value for omega and I want to know how far it gets in 6 seconds. So my value for theta is pi third. How far will that point travel? See, I got it right this time. The distance that point will travel. That distance is the arc length s, which is equal to r theta. We just found theta, and we were given our radius. So we've got 10 times pi third, which is 10 pi thirds, and our radius measure is in centimeters. So that's my value for s. My angle is pi third. The distance traveled is 10 pi third centimeters. And the final question, what is the linear speed of P? Linear speed is V. I have different ways to write this equation, but I know that I know S and T. S is 10 pi thirds centimeters, and that happens that distance is traveled in 6 seconds. So I end up with you notice I stop simplifying as I go <laughs> because apparently I can't keep it all straight today. 5 pi 9 centimeters per second is my linear speed for that point P traveling along the circle. Okay, moving right along to our second and third examples. We have a pulley 
the belt runs the pulley. Um, the radius of the pulley is five inches, and this belt that is maybe on a motor or something is turning that pulley at 120 revolutions per minute. 120 revolutions per minute. But those are the things we know. We need to end up with an angular speed. So we're looking for omega in radians per second. Now we are going to make use of dimensional analysis here. We're going to figure out what conversion factors we need to get where we need to be. Um, my, my pulley is turning 120 revolutions per minute. Omega is theta divided by T. I'm starting with revolutions per minute. I want to end up in radians per second. So I'm starting with revolutions per minute. I'm starting with 120 revolutions in one minute. I want to end up in radians per second. So let's focus on changing our revolutions to radians. Well, I know that one revolution all the way around a circle is 2 pi radians. So that's going to give me my first conversion factor. I need to divide out that unit revolution. So one revolution is the same thing as 2 pi radians. I've canceled out revolutions and I'm now in radians. The other thing I need to do is change time, my time units, from minutes to seconds. I know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So for this conversion factor, I need my minutes to cancel out. So I need minutes, they're already in the denominator. That means I need to put minutes in the numerator. So this conversion factor is going to be stacked minutes over seconds. Now my conversion factor tells me there's one minute is the same thing as 60 seconds. Here those units, minutes, cancel out. So I'm left with radians per second. I'm going to multiply across my numerator. That gives me 240 pi multiply across my denominator and I get 60. Well, that's 240 pi radians in 60 seconds. The speed, I'm going to go ahead and divide this out. Well, 240 divided by 60 is just 4. So that gives me 4 pi radians per second as my angular speed, omega. What if we need to find, oh, we switched, we switched topics. So now we're going to find linear speed, and we want to find it in inches per second. So angular speed is how fast the angle is changing. It's in radians per second. My linear speed is how fast a point on the, the curve is moving. Um, it's moving in inches per second. My radius is measured in inches, and uh, the time we need to end up with in seconds. So we're looking for linear speed. Let's go back and look for linear speed, that value v. We have some options here. What do we already know? Well, we know the radius. Um, we know, we just found omega, right? We know the radius. We were given the radius, and we just found omega. So let's use this one. So we know r and omega. So we're going to use v equals r times omega because that's that uses what we know. Um, our radius is 5 inches. Our speed omega is 4 pi radians per second. 5 times 4 pi is 20 pi. Radians is not really a unit, it's pure numbers, so 20 pi inches per second is my linear speed. All right, one more example here. Linear speed and distance traveled by a satellite. So we have all kinds of applications that we can, that we can use our, our trig functions for. 
Um, finding linear speed and distance traveled by a satellite. Satellite traveling in a circular orbit 1,800 kilometers above the surface of the Earth takes two and a half hours to make an orbit. So an orbit is a revolution. The radius of the Earth is about 6,400 kilometers. See the figure. So if I'm looking at the radius from the center of the Earth out to the satellite, that distance is, is the sum. 18 and 64 comes out to be 8,200 kilometers. That's my radius from the center of the Earth out to the satellite. I know that one orbit is like one revolution. That would be two pi radians. That's something else I know. I want to approximate the linear speed of the satellite to kilometers in kilometers per hour. I'm going to approximate the linear speed of the satellite to kilometers per hour. That means I'm going to round this off. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to keep it in terms of pi, but we're going to start with terms of pi. So let's look back at our linear speed calculations. We've got three different options here. I, I don't really know s. So I don't know the distance it travels in its orbit. I know the radius that it's traveling around the center of the Earth. I know theta, so we're looking at an orbit. An orbit is one revolution or two pi radians, so I know theta, and I know time. I know it takes two and a half hours to make one orbit. So this is the form of the linear speed equation that I'm going to use. V equals R theta over T. All right, so I've got 8,200 kilometers in two pi radians. So radius, one orbit, is my, is my angle theta. And it takes two and a half hours to make that orbit. We need it in kilometers per hour. We've got it in kilometers per hour, so we're good there. All right, 2 times 8,200 gives me 16,400 pi kilometers per 2.5 hours. And I'm going to plug that into my calculator. Uh, yeah, so I've got 16,400 pi divided by 2.5 and this is what I come up with so I come up with 20,608.84781 and then I ran out of space um, if I'm going to round this I want to approximate how many significant digits am I using well I'm using two significant digits so that means I'm going to round up here that's going to be about 21,000 kilometers per hour. That's the speed at which that satellite is rotating. The linear speed that it's traveling through its orbit. Approximate the distance the satellite travels in three and a half hours. Now how close my approximation is going to be is going to depend on if I work with this rounded value or if I go back and I, I start with my exact point here and then I multiply it by the three and a half hours. This is how far it travels in one hour. This is for how far it, it, that's average is going to be how far it travels in one hour. So I can do this, like I said, I can do this a couple of different ways. I can take my approximation, 21,000 kilometers per hour and multiply that times three and a half hours and that's going to tell me approximately how many kilometers. That gets me to 73,500 kilometers. But we know that this is going to be a really high estimate because I have rounded that off. I've rounded it up. So when I round it up and then I multiply it times three and a half, that rounding error has been increased. Um, so to be a little bit more exact, I could go back a step that's kilometers per hour and then multiply that by three and a half hours and that is still going to leave me with kilometers I can still round it off but it's going to I'm not going to end up with that rounding error till the end 
So 16,400 pi divided by 2.5 gets me my speed. I'm going to go ahead and use that exact speed, multiply it times three and a half hours, and yeah, definitely a difference here. So 72,130, almost 131 kilometers. If I round this to the right number of significant digits, I've got about 72,000 kilometers instead of 73,500. So you can see where when I round before the final answer, it makes a definite impact on what I end up with.